So now that I've shown you all of the geometric tools, the black versus the white arrow and things of that nature, I want to talk about gradients. I've shown you before, if you take your black arrow, select an object, and I've just drawn another circle here to start with. I click on the fill, my stroke or my swatches panel. I have a stroke panel right here, and I have a stroke right here. But I'll use the panel since it's open on my screen. I'll hit the up arrow, we'll make a thicker stroke. I'm still on the fill. And your swatches panel can fill objects with colors, with gradients, and with patterns. Now the only problem here is that it doesn't start with much. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my stroke panel and I'm going to pull the swatches panel out. Just so you can see that. I always recommend pulling the bottom edge down so nothing gets cut off. And I really only start with these specific colors. And I only start with a black to white gradient or a orange to yellow gradient or a blue or a fading sky gradient or this one right here, super soft black vignette. I don't like any of those. Okay, well, that's all the swatches panel is going to give me. And if I like patterns, but I don't like this one called foliage or this one called pompadour. Those are, those are the only two patterns Illustrator gives me. That's it. So what you need to understand about a lot of these panels is that Illustrator will start you off with some suggestions. But if you want to go above and beyond that, you have a library in the bottom left corner. On your swatches, you have swatch libraries. So if I want other sets of colors, I can go to art history colors, which are going to be more muted or earthy tones. Celebrations, which are bright, cheery colors like that. Okay, we'll just stick that off to the side. On my swatches panel, I can go down to earth tones, food colors, metals. I can go to gradients. Because it starts me off with black and white or yellow to orange. But I have all these other gradients. Earth tones, foliage if I'm doing an outdoor scene. They have skin tones, skies, stone and brick gradients, wood, water. All kinds of different categories of gradients. And you also have patterns. Your swatches panel starts you with two. But you have all these other patterns. Basic patterns are all black and white patterns whether they're dot patterns line patterns or textures you have decorative patterns which is like the pompadour and the foliage that i just showed you and you have nature patterns okay the swatches panel will start you off but you can go above and beyond what it starts with in the bottom left corner okay you also have brushes they have libraries right there symbols which you talk about later in the class that has libraries right there okay always check the bottom left corner for more options more functionality here in Adobe Illustrator but I want to experiment with gradients okay I'm gonna start with the basic I'm on the fill and I click the black and white gradient the most basic gradient Okay, what I would suggest is to edit your gradients, you go to the gradient panel and you pull that out. I would always recommend having the gradient panel and the swatches panel together because once you mix a gradient, just like you see here, you can save your gradients, which is what we're going to do in just a minute. So first, right at the top, you have three types of gradients. You have a linear gradient, which just goes in a straight line. You have a radial gradient, which obviously radiates outward. And you have the new, well, new in Illustrator CC 2019 was the um, freeform gradient. So I'm going to cover all those. I'm going to start with the linear gradient. And let's say I don't want my gradient to be white to black. These are your gradient sliders. Every circle represents a color in the gradient. So right now I only have a two color gradient. 
The diamond up here represents where white and black are mixing equally. So you'll notice if I push the diamond way over here, I get a lot more black in my gradient. Push the diamond way over there, I get a lot more white in my gradient. But typically it's going to be toward the middle. Okay, if I have colors that are already ready to go here on my swatches panel, let's say I want to do a red to blue gradient, you cannot just click because then the whole object will turn red. Okay, I'm going to start with my black and white again. If you have a color, you press and hold and drag and drop it onto that little slider. So I'll go to the blue. Press and hold, drag and drop it, and now I've just updated the colors on my gradient. If I like that gradient, and I'm thinking maybe I'm going to save that and use it later on, this is your gradient preview. You can drag it and drop it into this blank space on your swatches panel, and now I've just saved the red and blue gradient. Okay, so let's say I want to make a red, white, and blue gradient. But I only have red and blue. In between these gradient sliders, you can click anywhere, just right in this blank space, and add another color. I can press and hold on white, drag and drop it, and now I've got a three color gradient. Here's my gradient preview drag and drop it onto my swatches for safekeeping and there we go okay and I can go on and on I can click and add another color there and another color there I can drag an orange into this one let's say a green into this one drag and drop the preview so you can see some of the possibilities here Okay, once you like that, let's say you don't want your gradient going up and down like this. This is your gradient tool. And as soon as you click it, you're going to get a bar called the gradient annotator. Okay, every one of these is your little color sliders. You can click on it or double click and you have access to change that color. Okay, so if I don't want orange right here, I click it once to activate it double click and maybe on my color mixer I change it more to a reddish tone like that. I can instantly update the colors in my gradients. Maybe I want this to be yellow not green. Double click, pull some of the cyan out and there I've updated my gradient again. Okay so you have a lot of possibilities. If you don't like the angle of your gradient you just click and drag and when you let go it will change the direction of your gradient from top to bottom left and right any angle you want now your gradient colors will blend differently based on the length of that line so if I drag a short line I'm gonna get a hard mix gradient red yellow white red and then all the rest is blue Drag it a little longer. You can see how it spreads it out. Drag it really long. You don't have to keep confined to the circle. You can start way out here and drag way across there. You might not get as many colors, but you can do it. Click and drag from side to side. Okay, in addition to that, if I do not like a color on my gradient, and we'll just move these up so you can see this a little better. Go there. I can take this yellow and pull it straight down and tear it off the gradient. Pull this straight down and tear it off. Take green, drag and drop it, and now I've totally updated my colors again. You also have the ability to change the angle right here. I can type in an angle or I could just say I want it at a 90 degree angle if you want to be very mathematically precise, that's fine. You can also make your colors fade away. And what I mean by that is instead of white being 100% white, I can make it 30% white, which technically you're not even going to notice right here. 
But if I drew another object, you can see how the white is see-through. The green is not. It's a little more solid up there. It's a little more solid on the reds, but notice the white fades in the middle. So colors can have opacity to them. Okay, I can highlight that, type 100, and now it's nice and solid again. In addition to linear gradients, you also have radial gradients. And when you click on the gradient tool, you will get a different gradient annotator. That's your point of origin. That's your end. You also have the ability to enlarge it, to shrink it, to start from another location. And you also have the ability, let's drag it back here, to move it with this little black circle right there. Let's see if we can move that in. There we go. This little bar or this oval right here allows me to change my gradient from a circle into an ellipse, like the earth getting cut in half. So you have a lot of possibilities with radial gradients as well. And I'm going to switch back up here to my default black and white. See if I can go back to that. Black and white, there we go. And the last one is your freeform gradient. So I'm going to start with black and white, click on freeform, and let's see, there we go. So now I can click on this circle and change that to red. And then I can click right here and I'll change that to orange and I'll click down here and we'll change that to blue and you can see some of the possibilities. I'll click here and make that like green. You can click and enlarge the amount of blue or you can move the blue and see how it would mix with other colors. Okay, so you have the ability to have multiple values in an object and you see that as a live preview. So I can click right here, make that white. Uh, let's try to drag this out a little more. There we go. And now I can see what the white would do coming off that side or radiating out into all the other colors. So you have a lot of possibilities with your gradients. Okay. Keep that in mind. The only other thing that I wanted to show you about the gradients is how to save them. Now I've already saved them here. In fact, I'll take that one and drag it out too. See if I can drag it. Nope. You cannot save a free form gradient. Okay. Cause this applies to this actual shape. It wouldn't apply again to a star. Just wouldn't. Okay, so you can save linear gradients, radial gradients, but free form is truly that. It's a free form. You drag wherever you want, and it applies to the specific shape. Okay, the thing you got to keep in mind about your swatches panel, and this is really, really important. I'm going to put my gradient panel back over here. On your swatches, whatever you do on an Illustrator file, those swatches are good for that Illustrator file. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to drag an ellipse and I'm on the fill. So I'm going to click the little libraries menu, go down to patterns and let's go to basic textures. And I'm just going to click on a couple of textures. So there's a texture pattern. Here's sticks and here's uh, scrub is kind of lame. Let's go dashed. Um, see if I can find something good. Mesotint. All right, I'm going to pick this one. Okay, later on in the semester, you'll learn more about patterns and more importantly, how to create your own patterns. Because again, anybody who has Illustrator can click this library they can go to patterns and they can get exactly the same patterns, exactly the same patterns, exactly the same patterns. So they have this pattern as well and this pattern and this pattern. Everybody has these patterns.
So there's nothing really creative about using them because everybody has them. But my point of all this is every time I click on something, a new gradient, it gets added to my swatches. A new pattern, they get added to my swatches. But they are good for this Illustrator file. Watch what happens to the swatches when I go to File, New Document, it remembers the last thing I created, so I'll just click Create, and everything is gone. This has now reset itself to the default swatches. But when I click up here and go back to the previous one, notice they all come back. Click over here, now they're gone. Well, what if I wanted to use these patterns, but on this file at home? And I'm mixing patterns here at school, but then I want to use them when I get home. I'm going to have trouble. So here's what you can do. On your file where you've mixed all these, you go to your swatches panel pop-up, and it says Save Swatch Library. And notice there are two options. Save Swatch Library as ASE or save swatch library as AI. Okay, the difference here. ASE means Adobe Swatch Exchange. This allows me to save colors that I can also use those same colors in Adobe InDesign or in Adobe Photoshop. But this will only save colors. It won't save patterns and it won't save gradients. Okay? Save Swatch Library as AI or Adobe Illustrator means save everything on my swatches. So if I'm mixing these, let's say at school, and I want to use them at home or at work next week, I could go to Save Swatch Library as AI. I'll just click on my desktop, and I'll call this My Home pattern swatches okay I'll click Save now I go home I start a brand new file none of those are there I go to my swatches click the pop-up and now I say open a swatch library but it doesn't show up in this list these are the ones that come with Adobe Illustrator I made an other library so I click the one at the bottom on my desktop I find my home swatches you're not going to get any artwork it's going to be a code here and there are my home swatches it just opens up as a whole separate panel there's all my patterns there's those three gradients I just keep them side by side right there and that's how you can use swatches from one file to another, which can really, really help with consistency from project to project. You don't have to mix patterns and mix gradients every single time if you use the pop-up and save swatch libraries. Now I'm going to stop there now that I've talked about gradients. And what I'm going to do in the primer for part three is talk about some of the other panels that we haven't looked at here just really briefly and tell you some of the other possibilities that are available here in Adobe Illustrator.